The Vladimir Tarasenko show is on its way to Florida. The Florida Panthers acquire Vladimir Tarasenko from the Ottawa Senators, and it is a banger of a deal for the Panthers. A lot of Sens fans not loving this one, but is it that bad of a deal for the Senators, or are they just making the best of a situation that wasn't that great to begin with? Well, first and foremost, the player. Tarasenko going to Florida, <laughs> and I didn't even realize this. I knew Tarasenko was on a one-year deal. I knew he was a pending unrestricted free agent. I didn't know about the trade protection. Like Pierre Dorian's last little while in Ottawa had some of the greatest hits. I mean, the Alex Debrincat deal in and then out for a player who was never guaranteed to stay there. Does this sound familiar at all? But I guess what makes it different with Vladimir Tarasenko is he's on the back nine and Debrincat they were hoping could be a part of the Sens for the future. Tarasenko, he was a bit of a hired gun. He could show up in Ottawa, inject a bit of offense to a team that should have been scoring a whole hell of a lot. And then if he decides, hey, this is a pretty good situation, he sticks around. And I guess the decision that you had to make peace with at the time when you were giving him trade protection is, if things don't work out, whether he's good or not, but the team is not doing that well, if you have to sell, you can trade him, but he gets to tell you where he's going. Because what Ottawa gets out of this is a third round pick and a fourth round pick, but the fourth rounder is conditional. Here's the full deal from Pierre Lebrun. Ottawa retains 50% on Tarasenko in the trade with Florida, so add that to it too. Going to Ottawa from Florida, a 2024 fourth round pick, which becomes a 2026 third round pick if the Panthers win the cup, and a 2025 third round pick. Basically, if the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup, the Ottawa Senators third round pick uh, moves back two years, but moves up 32 spots. Potentially more if there's expansion over the next couple years, I guess. Look, it's something. It's definitely something for the Florida Panthers, who at times have been talked about like they're a one-line team, or at very least there's a few guys doing a lot of the offensive load. I really don't think the Panthers have many weaknesses. I think they're a strong Stanley Cup contender. If there was one perceived weakness, at least to me, a little bit of depth would be nice. Tarasenko, Perfect. Perfect. He adds to their offense. He adds some experience because he won a Stanley Cup in 2019, don't you know? And the dude is not washed. 17 goals and 24 assists for 41 points in 57 games so far with the Sens. That's pretty good. How does he adjust to the Florida Panthers? Well, I guess we'll see. In 69 games last season, he only had 18 goals split between the Blues and the Rangers. Only eight of those goals coming in the 31 games that he played with the Rangers. But 21 points overall 21 points in 31 games that's not bad and he put up three goals and one assist for four points in seven games in the rangers first round loss to the devils i mean this is bill zito just doing a great job honestly not only does he identify like a good player a solid player who you know can do it because he's done it he does it for a very cheap price this dude looked around the nhl he looked at teams who were vulnerable he looked at teams with unique situations and he said well vladimir tarasenko wants to move closer to his family i'm gonna get him for cheap and that's not me assuming chris johnston one of the best in the biz of sdpn fame of note with the sen's modest return in the vladimir tarasenko deal to florida a third plus a conditional fourth the player had a strong say in the process courtesy of his no trade clause really really tidy work from florida now if you want a reason for some optimism for some sort of silver lining for the Senators, well, first of all, you get two picks, regardless. It's worse than a kick in the teeth. It's worse than nothing, which was also an option, I guess. But Jason York, former Ottawa Senator, still talks about the Sens all the time. I thought he had a really good uh, insight here. Here's what he said on Twitter. People forget if Pinto didn't get suspended, the Sens probably would have had to move Joseph for peanuts. The Tarasenko deal was dumb to begin with, and you threw in a no trade just to make sure you handcuffed yourself at the deadline. Big name chasing with no plan at its finest. Now, I know what you're thinking. Steve, that doesn't sound like silver lining at all. Well, it is. Number one, the dude who put you in this position, the dude who signed Vladimir Tarasenko, gave him the trade protection and everything, handcuffing you at the deadline and building a team that hasn't been able to contend for a playoff spot this year, he's gone. That was Pierre Dorian. 
he's gone. So, yes, it was a mistake to give Tarasenko that deal. It was a mistake to give him the trade protection. That spilled milk. The guy who signed that deal is no longer employed by the Ottawa Senators. At least he's not the GM. Also, the Shane Pinto situation, not good. The fact that the Sens are not in a playoff spot, not good. But if you think about how it worked out, okay, they were able to keep Joseph and not trade him for peanuts, and that is a piece who could build with you into the future. And at least he gets something for Tarasenko, and all right, it's looking a little rosier, isn't it? And it's not like the Sens want to tear this thing down to the, the bones either. This year workout? No, not at all. They want to be right back to contending for a playoff spot, at very least being in the conversation next season. Not to mention, there's still two days until the trade deadline. Who knows what else Ottawa has in store? And who knows if the Florida Panthers will add even more because they did not break the bank for this one. Two thirds, but potentially just a third and a fourth for half of Tarasenko's salary, dude? They're, they're a cup contender. They're absolutely a cup contender. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe to SDPN if you really liked it. And tell all your friends that I got at least two more videos to shoot after this one, and maybe more, because today uh, is apparently the de facto trade deadline day. Except we're gonna have trade deadline coverage on Friday. Regardless, even if there are no trades left, we will talk at length about how things are shaping up. There will be content!